In this video, we talk about the very powerful branch feature. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, branching is one of the most powerful features inside of Git because it gives you a lot of flexibility and options. So if you're watching my previous videos, you know that there's a master, master branch that we've been working with, and that's where we've been doing our commits and everything is on that master branch. And your master branch is essentially your, your stable code. That's like your code that is stable and secure, and it works, typically. Of course, unless you're just starting out and trying to get things off the ground. But once you have something stable, that's like on your master branch. Um, and then if you want to add like new features or try something new, that's usually when you want to create a new branch, like a feature branch where you go over there, you construct it, and you make sure it works and everything before you go ahead and you merge it with your, your master branch. So that's essentially the flow. Like you have your, your master branch that works, and then you have your other branches. You can have multiple branches. You don't. You can have more than two, like this diagram shows. You can have 30 branches if you wanted to. But so you can have a lot of branches, and you're you're testing different features. And then when you're good on that other branch, you can go ahead and merge it into your master branch, and then you have a new master branch essentially with that feature added in, right? So that's essentially how it works, and what we're going to be doing in this video. Also having multiple branches is good for other developers. So when you're working on a team or with a group of people, um, you could have one person working on one feature or another person working on another feature and so on. So you have all these branches going on. They're not impacting your master branch and then you can merge things as, as different features are completed. So that's another benefit of having multiple branches. So let's go over to Git Bash and create some branches. All right, so here I am in Git Bash and let's just go ahead and do Git branch real quick and we see that we have one branch currently, the master branch, and there's this little asterisk here and it's green showing us that we're on the master branch. You can also see that we're on the master branch by it saying so right here. So there's two ways to kind of tell what branch you're on and what you're working with so you don't get confused because it can get kind of confusing where the heck you are and what you're working on. All right, so if we want to go ahead and add another branch, you type in git branch and then the name of your branch. So let's say that my project's a website and I wanna add a blog to my website, so that's gonna be the feature. So I go to git branch blog. And just like that, my blog branch has been created and we can check it by going git branch. And we see that now we have two branches. We have the master, which I'm still on, and then I have the blog branch. So if I wanna switch over to that blog branch and start working on my blogging feature, I do git checkout blog. So switch to blog branch. You notice now that it changed from master to blog. So now I'm in my blog branch and now it functions just like normal. So I can go ahead and make changes to my files. I can add them to my staging area. I can commit them and we're gonna run through that example real quick. So let's go ahead and let's say I wanna create a new folder over here. We'll call it blog. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm gonna copy these three files. I'm gonna throw them in my blog folder and come back out here. And okay, cool. Let's go ahead and do git status to see what is up. And we see that we have untracked files. We have a blog folder here that we could go ahead and add to our staging area for committing. So let's go ahead and do git add period. And then we'll go to git commit. And it's loading up my text editor. So initial blog setup. Commit. All right, cool, good enough, save. And boom, just like that, we've gone ahead and done our first commit on our blog branch. Now let's let's check out our commits. So we'll go to git log one line. Let's see what, what this looks like. All right, so this is kind of interesting, right? So we're on our blog branch and we see we have our initial commit here and then we have another commit added basic HTML and tile and title it's supposed to be. And we notice that it's on our master. So basically what this is saying is we had these two commits happen on our master branch before we created this new blog branch. So these are still included in the blog branch that we've made. But now going forward, all of these commits are gonna be on that blog branch. So if I came in here, just for example, I don't know, let's edit some code real quick. Uh, this is my title. This 
Well, welcome to my blog. All right, so cool. Now we can go ahead and get add. And I forgot my period, get add period, get commit. And let me do the shorthand, changed blog title. And then I can do get log one line. All right, so now we have our, our two master commits and now we're doing our blog uh, branch commits. So that's pretty cool, right? It keeps things separate like that. Now, let's say that I wanna go back to my master branch. To do that, I do git checkout master. So just like I switched over to my blog branch, if I wanna switch back to my master branch, it's git checkout branch name, i.e. master. So if I do that, I switch back to master, and I don't know if you noticed, maybe I'll do a little replay video, uh, the, the blog folder vanished, right? Because that blog folder that I created is only available in the, in the blog branch so let me let me just do it get check out blog and boom blog folders back right so I've switched branch and you see how those files change and then get check out master back in the master branch and let me do get log one line and you'll notice I'm back in the master branch so we don't see those blog branch commits within the master branch. So it's keeping those two things separate, right? Just like that diagram shows, like I have commit one, two, three, four, and then we're over here on the blog branch and it's doing its own thing over here, whereas the master branch is over here doing its own thing. And then we can go ahead and merge the branches together, which is what we're gonna do in a follow on video. But before we get to it, I wanna show you one more thing and that's how to delete a branch. So let me go ahead and get branch delete me. So I made a new branch called delete me, get checkout, delete me. And so I'm in that branch now, the delete me branch. And I don't like this branch. You know, I was working on some feature and it didn't turn out as I, as I hoped it would. And I don't want this branch anymore. Let's close this thing down and, you know, be done with it. So I could, of course, leave this branch alone and you know not touch it and not merge it into my master branch or I could delete it and I'm gonna delete it. So to delete it, let me switch back to my master branch real quick, being a branch that exists. And then I do git, git branch dash capital D and then the branch name that I wanna delete, delete me, run that real quick. And I misspelled branch, git branch delete me. And deleted branch, delete me. So now if I go back to get branch, we see that there is no delete me branch to choose from. So that is how you could go ahead and delete a branch if you wanted to delete it from existence. And so that's it for this video on branches. Pretty cool, powerful stuff, right? And if you found this video helpful in any way, shape or form, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And I hope that you have a great rest of the day.